Therefore, I want to speak to many ongoing misstatements made to Burien City Council over the last several months. The first one is, NUAC is only for a few North Highline residents. <coughs> NUAC is part of a King County ordinance that established five communities in unincorporated King County in order for residents to have a say in how King County governed them. <coughs> NUAC is one of those organizations. I'm not quite sure of when the uh, process was started. I think in the early 2000s. So that was a misperception that has been said over and over again, which is very clear. <coughs> Secondly, Darian is putting out false statements to hide actual budget needs. The documents that have been <coughs> presented over the past as long as I can remember, probably since 2003 or 4, certainly looked at different aspects of annexation. The ones that seem to be quoted are those that North Highline asked to be incorporated as a standalone city. The documents say very clearly that North Highline didn't have a strong revenue base to be able to support an independent city. So I want to make sure that that's understood by, by those who are making these, these statements that are inaccurate. Early, uh, early reports demonstrate that, I guess I'm saying the same thing again, early reports demonstrate annexation is infeasible. The point I want to make here is a boundary review board put together a very detailed analysis of whether they should approve or disapprove of the proposed annexation. For, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, <coughs> ask us to read that. It speaks to the legitimacy of the work that has been done by both Miriam <coughs> and its consultants to provide accurate and carefully thought through information. The fourth point that's been brought up numerous times is 2,000 businesses and residents signed a petition against annexation. That petition was probably circulated in what I can remember being maybe 2006. So we're looking at a petition that was at least six, year old, six years old, if not longer. The people that circulated the petition were vehemently opposed to annexation. And when it was looked at carefully, the petition did not accurately represent the proposed uh, annexation at the time. The signatures were coerced and I use that word very carefully, with information that was not accurate. The fact that fire, water, and sewer <coughs> will remain the same, that's not assured. The studies that the city has been doing for the past several years say that they could stay the same, but each entity will have to enter into a memo of understanding <coughs> in order to move forward. I support annexation because it brings two diverse communities together. They've been separated long enough. I think we need to move forward. Burien will have a much more efficient and transparent governing structure than King County or possibly Seattle. Police services are already in place through the King County contract. Officers move seamlessly between King County, North Highline, and the city of Burien and the city of SeaTac. They provide services, they know their community, they know who they're looking for, who they're there to help. So I would not want that to not continue. The thing that really impresses me more than anything else is Burien is in the midst of change. The community that's objecting to annexation has not seen change, change as a welcome attribute to our community. I think change is a good part of Burien's future. I'm pleased to be a part of this very dynamic and thriving community. I would like the annexation to go forth in August, but if it's the will of this
Council, I will be happy to see it on the November ballot. <coughs> I've been fairly silent about the annexation, but the misinformation that's out in the community has gotten to the point where it needed to be corrected on camera and in the record. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like, I'd like to speak briefly on the proposed change on the election date, and then I'd like to speak at all length on the, the ordinance and the resolution and the chief. Okay, go ahead and speak to the date change. Okay, I've heard a lot of information, people saying that they believe that the general election would be much better, would get a bigger turnout. I've done a fair amount of reading on this uh, over the past uh, month or so. And while more people show up to vote at a general election, uh, many of those people show up to vote for just the, the uh, headline election. They vote for president, maybe governor. Uh, in this upcoming general election, there's going to be a very bitter initiative on the ballot. Uh, at least one. The annexation will be very far down the ballot on the back of the page. It's uh, highly likely that most of the people that are eligible to vote will get their ballot and not even reach the annexation issue. And the debate over the annexation would get drowned out in the uh, that promises to be extraordinarily bitter elections for President Trump and over the uh, marriage equality initiative. The, uh, the conclusion I've come to is that it really doesn't make too much difference which election it's on. In August, it'll get more attention. People that vote will have a chance to be more informed. It's possible that more people would be voting in uh, November, but it's possible that actually fewer people will be voting in November. Some of the reading has indicated that as few as a third of the people vote on everything on the ballot, and uh, as in some cases more than a third vote for just the marquee race and skip the rest of the ballot. So I'm, uh, I'm okay with whatever date we set it for but on the motion to change the date, I'll vote no. Shall we vote on the amendment to uh, council member Kirkland? Yeah, thank you. I'd like to speak to the amendment. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mayor Bennett for introducing it. Although I, I feel strongly that financially, annexation of uh, area Y would put Burien at a financial detriment and a hardship, I do believe that uh, offering voters, the most voters, the opportunity to participate in um, their government process is the right thing to do. So I support shifting it from August to November. Um, thank you. Okay, so are we prepared to vote on the amendment only to change the date? So, uh, please register your votes then. <coughs> the motion passes six to one. Opposed, Councilmember Robinson. Thank you. So, we're back to the main motion that includes the November date now. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? Yeah. Councilmember Robinson, you may continue. Okay, I've been studying this issue for many years, since the mid-90s. Uh, my initial position on it was that North Island should annex as its own city, but it very quickly became obvious that that just wasn't 
fiscally practical because of the startup costs, not because of inability to uh, fund the ongoing operation of a city, but because of the, the startup costs of putting a city together, especially when you have a <coughs> city of Burien, which already has functioning government and has gotten past those initial bumps. A major part of my initial uh, reluctance was getting involved in the, the uh, kind of nasty fighting that I saw going on in the city of Burien, uh, which has not really improved any over the last few years. We get a small handful of people throwing out a lot of disinformation and embroiling uh, the city in controversy that shouldn't be there at all. North Highline is part of Burien. The reason it wasn't part of the annexation when Burien <coughs> annexed is because in the previous annexation effort, people in that area voted against our previous incorporation effort when a much larger city of Highline was proposed, people in the North Highline area voted against uh, incorporation. A smaller area was selected as a way to get started, create a city, and then build from there. The city has already expanded once to the south, it's already expanded once to the north, and this would finish the expansion to what would have been the original area of the city. As far as the specific information has been raised. Uh, I can address the UAC. I was part of a very large committee <coughs> of people that in North Highline that created the UAC. That was an effort through a uh, small group of King County councilmen trying to find a way for unincorporated areas to have a greater say in their own communities. It was seized upon in North Highline and a, a large committee which started out, the first meeting had over 200 people at it. The actual drafting committee had over 30 people involved. I was the primary drafter on the bylaws for it. It was the first UAC created in the county and its bylaws became the model that when other organizations went to the county about creating a UAC, that's the example that they received for what they should put in their bylaws. Now the county has recently decided to abandon that, go back to the old top-down approach and, uh, and break neighborhoods apart so that they don't have to listen to the people in the neighborhoods. That's not a reason for uh, turning away from North Highline. With respect to some of the things that have been brought, the Highline School District, yes, the Highline School District would continue to serve that area even if Seattle annexed it, which is a great deal for Seattle because it can pursue uh, land use patterns in that area with no need to worry about the impact those have on the school district. The impact would fall on all the rest of us taxpayers in the Highline School District. There's no assurance the utility districts would remain independent. What the City of Seattle has said over and over is that they would consider it. History does not support that. They have never done that in any other area where they've done an annexation. A uh, prime example is the Arbor Heights area, which is still served by Southwest Suburban Sewer District, which provides wholesale service. The city of Seattle owns a utility and charges the customers there the same rate it charges the rest of its customers in the city, which is over three times what Southwest Suburban <coughs> Sewer District charges. Even though Southwest Suburban is basing its rates on the same rates that it charges customers that it serves directly. Uh, the fire districts, I have it on good authority from people in the fire districts that those issues are in fact on the way to resolution and will in fact be resolved. The 
this $77 million deficit I keep hearing about just doesn't exist. It's a wish list of projects that we would do. It's not significantly different from the $166 million uh, projection that we have in the draft transportation master plan that we'll be discussing at a future meeting. The sales tax credit is in fact secure at this point and I've seen no reason for it to go away. The, uh, I haven't heard of any reduction in our police services. Has there been? Uh, frankly, I think that the annexation is the right thing for the people of Burien, it's the right thing for the city of Burien, it's the right thing for the people of North Highline, and it would be irresponsible for us as a city council to not give the people of North Highline a chance to vote on this. Thank you. Council Member Krakowiak. Thank you. Um, as I've mentioned uh, throughout this process, I have uh, grave financial concerns. And, uh, I don't believe that long term in this financial economic time that annexation would be economically viable. Uh, the fire, group, uh, fire districts, we still need to see agreements, especially regarding retirement, which is a huge financial impact. The emergency response <coughs> to the area and services to the Sliver by the River and the Delta Marine. <coughs> the sales tax credit might be secure in 2012, but it is not guaranteed, as we've seen during this legislature, legislative session. Uh, I, I'd like to see some realistic infrastructure numbers if the $77 million is not correct, then what is? And then lastly, I did uh, have the opportunity to attend both Boundary View Board meetings recently, and several Boundary View Board members had concerns over the financial figures that they were given, and uh, they, they did make their decision on the limited information I believe it was incomplete information, and uh, I will be a no vote tonight. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything? Uh, Council Member Block. Thank you, Madam Deputy you. Mayor. I want to say, first of all, that uh, North Highline is a wonderful area, and uh, I hope that someday, someday that it be part of your end. Uh, right now is not that time. Um, you know, we have serious shortcomings uh, associated with the uh, uh, annexation. And uh, what we're doing right now, basically, is signing a contract without negotiating the terms first. I think that's a dangerous position to be in. If we go forward with this, we're going to have no leverage. And I don't think it's a coincidence that right after we did our vote for... Uh, forward with going to the boundary review board that uh, the King County Library System proposed closing the uh, White Center and Boulevard Park libraries and that suddenly the legislature uh, decided to withdraw the uh, decided, excuse me, the governor proposed to uh, withdraw the uh, sales tax credit. Um, like I said, it's, it's more than a coincidence. Well, there's been a lot of talk about uh, Seattle and Nets in the area. Well, quite frankly, I feel that's a red herring. Uh, I don't think there's the political will uh, or the desire to uh, have Seattle uh, annex that area. And I certainly have enough faith in the residents of the North Highland area not to uh, vote for that. And as I move forward, I have to, uh, first of all, recognize my responsibility as an elected official who's elected to represent the citizens of the present <coughs> And I also have to recognize that if we move forward, that I will assume a moral obligation to the citizens of the North Island to be able to provide services. And uh, quite frankly, given the numbers that I have seen, the fact that uh, we haven't uh, we have no guarantee as far as uh, the sales tax credit or other issues. Uh, I can't.
cannot maintain my responsibilities as the citizens of Marion, and I cannot stand up and say morally that I'm uh, I'm uh, moving forward in the best interest of the <coughs> citizens of North Highland. As I said, we have no guarantee of the sales tax credit, and without that. I don't feel I can meet my responsibility to Burien citizens or meet my moral obligations to the citizens of North Island. The fire district has talked about how they will incur a $1 million a year deficit. They'll have difficulties maintaining service at their present level with that deficit in place. As I've said, I have a responsibility to the present citizens of Burien and a moral responsibility if we move forward with the annexation of North Highland, I mean, who would know? There's been a uh, much talk about the $77 million capital backlog in the uh, North Highland area. To put that in perspective, in Burien itself, the present boundaries of Burien, that backlog is $56 million according to our last transportation uh, plan update. Well, that's an area three times the size of the proposed area that we're going to look at annexing. So figure that out per capita. That's a huge burden that we would be incurring with no assurance from King County, who presently is operating at a $7 million a year deficit. They have scope to make up for some of this neglect that they've incurred up there to follow through. Again, doesn't allow me to meet my responsibility to the present citizens of Burien or my moral obligations to the citizens of North Highland. I'm going to vote no on this. Uh, as I've said, North Highland is a wonderful area. I want it someday to be part of the citizen of the city of Burien. But until such time as I will be assured that I will be able to continue to deliver services to the city, to the present residents of Burien, and also to be able to deliver services to the people of North Highline, I will vote no and will continue to vote no. Thank you. And lastly, I have some comments. First, rather than go over uh, everything that's been said before, I just want to associate myself with the comments made by Council Member McGilton and Council Member Robeson. Um, uh, I, uh, I have been, um, I was on the original planning commission. I have been on council for a long time. I have taken a lot of votes and I know that with each one of those, there has been uh, folks who uh, were concerned. Basically, I think about change, not wanting to change. And there's been gloom and doom uh, <coughs> scenarios uh, put out there about what would happen. For instance, uh, when we rebuilt 4th, 4th Avenue Southwest, there was a lot of concern about that. It, it was the first road that Burien actually rebuilt. There was a no contingent that said, don't do that. Today, it's a beautiful street that people like to use. Town Square Land Assembly and the uh, resulting agreement was very controversial with a large group of people again opposing. I opposed the purchase of meal makers. I didn't see that that was necessary, but the rest of the land assembly, I totally supported. And uh, <coughs> we have received so many awards, so many positive comments, uh, a very positive press. I'm very proud of that. The City Hall Library Complex here was not brought to the people without controversy. Um, in the years since we've been a city, we have improved Seahurst Park. There was controversy over that. There used to be people that would not let their children go in there because it was unsafe. Eagle Landing Park, when it was first proposed by citizens, were very angry with what the city was proposing to do with the land that was bought with city uh, taxpayer dollars. Uh, it was very, very controversial. I've gotten very many phone calls on that one, all negative. Uh, Jacob Ambon Park, Matheson Park, uh, each, each one required a separate vote of council, but each one was a controversy that has, has turned 
out over time to be a very positive action for the city. This is just a short summary of, uh, of the times that we have had controversial issues to deal with, that we have moved forward in a positive fashion, and it has benefited the city. Uh, and I would like to bring back to people's minds the comments by uh, Councilmember Patterson. During all of these times when we have had these um, uh, hard uh, issues, we have remained a fiscally responsible city. Uh, we have not laid off massive amounts of people. We have not raised taxes. Uh, we have not um, we have not cut our, our funding to human services and, and um, all of the things that we have funded over time, we still continue to fund. That's because with our staff, we have had very good fiscal management of the city. So each time we have one of these votes, each time we had to move forward in some fashion, my criteria was what was good for the city of Burien. And sometimes those folks were uncomfortable because you don't feel very, real happy sitting up here with people standing at the microphone telling you that what you're about to do is pretty dumb. Uh, so uh, that happened with the first annexation. That annexation has proved to be a good thing for the city of Burien. So I'm very happy to support this current annexation because I truly believe that it is for the best of the future of Burien. I have to live with myself with every decision I make. I can't do that if I let naysayers make the decision for me because they are so um, so adamant in their, in their view and would hold the city back. I want to see Burien move forward. And with this annexation, I totally believe we will move forward. Thank you. So, Council Member Edgar. Uh, at this point in time, I do not believe that the annexation of the North Highline area is uh, an, an economically sound idea. I think uh, as a representative of the Burien citizens that I'm obligated to also take a look at what needs we have to have met, whether it is um, managing our stormwater problems, handling our capital improvement areas. Uh, I think we have more than enough to keep us busy and the funds that we are short of, we need to keep in our area. I think that uh, we cannot necessarily depend on the state income, real, real estate, uh, or the state sales tax rebate as a, as a sure thing. Uh, it may last for one year, it may last for two years, but we know from the projections that, from the Burke study, that at the end of 10 years, we're still going to be uh, in the hall. So I will be a no vote. I'd just like to respond to a couple of things that have been said here uh, by my fellow council members. The capital plan is a red herring, is capital needs. If you go back to the study, what you see is a range, 77 million keeps getting thrown out. That's the high end of the range and ran like 40, started with like 40 million. If you look at our current Transportation master plan, which covers only transportation, doesn't cover any of the other capital needs that are covered in that other figure. We have 56 to 75 million in just for current projects before you include projects of a more regional nature, like uh, First Avenue South, uh, bringing several roads up to design standards, etc., which bring a total of 156 to 166 million. <laughs> Complaining that, that this isn't a situation where there's crumbling roads and bridges up there that need to be replaced immediately. If this is a question that there's a wish list very similar and very much in proportion to what we have for the rest of the city of Erion, it would be nice to do. Uh, and if anybody had, if you took the time to drive around and check out Erion streets and take a look at the current infrastructure in Burien and then drive around North High Line and make, give it a similar examination, you would not find a difference. 
The, uh, and as far as the library, actually, the decision to close down the libraries had started long before our vote on moving forward to the Boundary Review Board. And one of the excuses used by the King County Library System was that that area might annex to Seattle and those current libraries were too close to the Seattle boundary and they would lose a bunch of their service area. Putting this to a vote, moving forward in annexation, eliminates that, that excuse for closing down those libraries. I've been studying this for a long time, like I said before, and I am 100% convinced that it's the financially responsible thing to do it's the best thing for the city of Burien. It actually will benefit Burien more than it benefits people in North Island. <coughs> Thank you.